guys. Finally back and back to work after Boston. It was awesome. Uh, this is a shirt from last year because it's raining so much, but um, they had it and I had to pick it up. This week, we're talking about the ballista workout. Originally, I think, this workout was originally developed by Jason Fitzgerald over at strengthrunning.com. Awesome guy, really knows his stuff. Um, but I wasn't quite happy with uh, it being able to meet all the needs of my clients um, and myself. So we added some things to it. We upgraded it. Uh, we put in a little bit of upper back, some shoulder girdle stuff. Um, it was originally it was designed to really help develop some pelvic stability, really get the glutes firing, keep the hips stable to minimize SI issues and IT band issues and knee injuries and all the stuff we normally associate with running. Um, but if we're going to go through all that work, we might as well put in a couple extras and uh, get the shoulder girdle good and stable too. So I'm going to do a voiceover. Uh, Probably not time lapse, but we'll do a voiceover of the uh, workout that I just did on the living room. And uh, so you guys can see how and why we're doing each exercise and what specifically we're targeting. And uh, hopefully we get into the nitty gritty of it. Uh, the whole thing, once you've done it once, should only take you about 20 minutes. Um, the first time you do it, you're maybe walking a little funny the next day. It's pretty common uh, for folks to be walking around uh, the next day like their glutes are completely lit up. Because they are. Um, especially if you're not used to using your glutes while you run. So, that's why we do it though. Get those glutes firing and keep the pelvis stable so we don't get hurt. Take it easy and uh, let's roll into the workout. So we're going to start this off by doing some side step ups. And the basic rule of thumb for all these exercises is we're going to do 10 to 20 on each side, um, depending on who we are, uh, you know, how much resistance we're using, that kind of thing. But for this, you don't need, you don't necessarily need extra resistance. You can use just your body weight. But what we're looking to do is get a little bit of that lateral motion and drive up through our heel. We want to keep the heel on the box or the, uh, in this case, chair. Uh, we want to keep that heel in contact with it through that whole range of motion. We don't want to be up on the ball of our foot. What we're working on here is that lateral stability in our ankle, our knee, and our hip as we're going up and down. So we want to get all the way up, coming up to a high knee position, and then all the way back down to the floor with both feet between each rep. Notice we got my, I got my arms going, um, just kind of simulating that running, those running mechanics. And then we're trying to keep the hips and the shoulders square through the whole range of motion. Now you can see my left hip gets a little tight. And so you can see my left shoulder drop, drops back a little bit. And that's okay. Um, I still get a lot out of this exercise, even though I can't execute it 100% correctly because my left hip is a little tight. If you are doing this inside, watch out for the fan in your living room. <laughs> so on the other leg, I hit the fan there. On the other leg, we're doing the same thing, and you can see we're driving up through the heel, and you can actually see it a little better on this side. Um, but yeah, you just plant the heel and drive up through the glute, and then control it on the way back down. And I can't stress that enough. The big thing is to control the, control the way down. You want to lower yourself. You don't want to just fall onto your bottom leg. Here's a side view, so you can kind of see where my knee is in relation to my toes. Obviously, if you're getting on a tall box, um, if your foot's going directly sideways, your knee has to get pretty far forward. And that's okay as long as you're not putting excess pressure on your knee. We want that knee, we want the heel right under our center of gravity, though. We don't want it too far out in front of us because we want to go straight sideways and not necessarily forward at an angle as we're doing this. But you can see I'm trying to keep my core stable. Um, I'm trying to keep that core kind of straight up and down through the whole range of motion, uh, which you know, using a chair this tall can be a little difficult. Um, and if you can start on a lower box, that's perfectly fine. Um, and if you're at the gym doing this and you have a taller box, you can do it. Just make sure you got good hip control through the whole range of motion. Next up on our list, we have our side plank. And I didn't quite have enough room to really do this in my living room. You see I'm kind of trying to push the recliner and the couch a little bit. Um, 
but it's the only spot I really had to really put the camera to where you'd be able to actually see me. So what we're looking for is we want a straight vertical line from my left shoulder to my left elbow, and then we want a straight line from the top of my head through my spine down to between my feet. Now you can kind of catch, I kind of catch myself a couple times there, you know, hips kind of sinking a little bit because I'm a little preoccupied about not getting my head on the recliner or pushing the couch, that kind of thing. And we're looking for somewhere between 30 seconds and a minute, probably on each side. If you can do a minute of this on each side, just fine. Uh, go ahead, feel free, and you can put your feet on an unstable surface such as a foam pad or a BOSU ball or even a stability ball, um, something along those lines. Or you can put your elbow on a unstable surface as well. If you really have um, a good sense of balance and a lot of core strength, you can put your feet and your elbow on a BOSU ball. Um, here you see I got a little smarter and just kind of went at a little bit of an angle. Um, but again, I have my right elbow directly under my right shoulder in a straight line from the top of my head through my feet. In the interest of uh, making this video not an hour long, let's uh, go ahead and we'll skip forward to the next exercise. Next up, we have our twisting lunges, and we're going to alternate legs on these. And the goal while we're doing these isn't necessarily to get super deep in a lunge. Uh, well, the goal is to challenge our ability to keep our hips and knees stable while we're doing the twist. And there are two ways to do this. You can do it either um, do the lunge and then twist, or as you'll see in a little bit when we got the frontal view, we will go twist while we're lunging, which is a little more complicated. It takes a little more skill to be able to do it. But what we're looking for in this lunge, as you can see on my front leg, the knee stays pretty much right above the ankle. And the shoulders stay right above the hips. Coming forward and back, you can see that back knee and the hips. We want to keep those square through the whole range of motion. What you don't want to see is you can kind of see my right knee do it there is that knee buckles in a little bit as we twist because we're not holding on with that glute. And so the whole idea is to keep those knees and hips stable while we're moving. Notice this mimics running uh, to a certain degree. You know, it's a, you know, we're stepping forward and trying to keep the knee and the hips stable. Next up, we have our side hip bridges. And you can either do these on, their, on the ground, like I'm doing here, which isn't as quite as much resistance. And we're just going to squeeze our hip up and down using that bottom glute. Now, if you need more resistance on a bigger range of motion, you can put your feet on an elevated surface. Nobody tell my wife to put my shoes on the couch. But we're going to do the same action up and down, side to side. And I'm going a little quick here. We should try to keep it controlled and smooth so it's a squeeze. We don't want to throw our hip up. We want it controlled. Uh, again, working on that hip control that hip stability through a lateral range of motion. Notice we're also getting a little more shoulder girdle stability work out of this as well because we're having to balance on that right arm. After completing the set on one side, we'll go ahead and we'll roll it over and we'll do the same number on the other side. That way we can hit the other side of the shoulder girdle and the other hip. One thing I would like to point out is you can notice I try to keep a straight line when I'm at the top when I'm getting set up from my ankle through my shoulder. Uh, we don't want our butt sticking out behind us. Uh, it'll, because we're squeezing our glutes, it'll feel like we're shifting our hips forward. But if you notice, I put my hand on my hip here, and my thumb is right on the muscle that we're using on the top side to kind of keep stuff lined up. But it also allows you to notice if your hip falls forward or backward, if you're rotating through that range of motion. Next up, we have our clams. And here what we want to do is we want to get our feet and our hips and our shoulders lined up in a straight line. And you'll notice I have my head on my arm. I'm not posted up on my elbow. And this is so that we keep the spine in a straight line. I see a lot of folks when they're doing exercises laying on their side, posting themselves, supporting their head with their hand while laying on their elbow. And it really curves your spine. Don't do that. But here, we're working the top glute now. So I'd highly recommend doing this on laying on the same side to just work for the last set of hip bridges. But what we want to do is with that hand on that hip, it'll allow us to notice if we're rolling forward and back. 
And if we are, that indicates that we're not holding on with the bottom hip. Because that bottom hip being engaged is going to be what keeps the hip, hips stable. It's going to keep the pelvis stable while we're externally rotating that top leg. Now here we can get a view from another angle as I do the other side and allow you to kind of see the line we're looking for from our ankle to our hips to our shoulders. And your head can be forward a little bit, that's fine. But notice my back is straight and I actually have my heels a little behind my hips and that's okay. Um, but we're still getting that solid squeeze on both glutes. And with where my thumb is on my hip, I can feel the exact muscle I'm trying to engage for this exercise. And by doing that, it allows me to really get as much as I can out of this. You can upgrade it by putting uh, like a rubber band around your knees. But if you're good at those isometric squeezes, you shouldn't have to, as long as you have that fine motor control. Next up, we have our twisted push-ups, which is one of the new additions to the upgraded ballista. But what we're going to do is we're going to get in a push-up position, and we're going to hike our one of our legs up as high as we can get it, almost like we're kind of stretching our hip and our hamstring. What this does is it creates a little bit of tension in our core, um, and it kind of shifts the load from being a little more of a chest exercise to being a little more in the lats. It'll feel more like a one-handed push-up. Uh, Again, you notice that left hip isn't quite as mobile, doesn't quite have the range of motion that my right one does. But, of course, stays nice and stable and allows you to get in a little bit of shoulder work. Next up, we have our adductor raises. And these are the exact opposite of the hip bridges where we're working on our abductors. Here we're working on our adductors, working on the muscles on the inside of our hip, which help keep our legs stable not not collapse outward um but again you notice i got my hand on my hip so i can tell if my hips being stable while i do this uh, i would recommend doing this on a softer surface than a hardwood floor and <laughs> it will especially uh it, it'll grind into your head but we're going to do is you know a set on the left side set on the right side again keeping that head laying on our arm not propping ourselves up putting our hand our head in our hand but we want to get both sides nice solid squeeze we don't want to throw it but just a nice solid squeeze up and down here we can see the next exercise which are the hay bales uh, normally i have I have an eight gallon or a one gallon jug around here somewhere which weighs roughly eight pounds you can do this with medicine ball but what i had available to me today while i was trying to film was some three pan three pound hand weights which work just fine uh, you can also do this just your body weight but what we're looking for is to get a pivot, really squeezing that glute that we're standing on, really opening up the rib cage, just like we're throwing something over our shoulder, uh, which is why they're called hay bales, like it's pitching a hay bale over your shoulder. Can't say I've ever actually seen anyone throw a hay bale like this, um, but that's what they're called. So, But again, we're working on that glute, big solid squeeze, a little bit of an explosive pop off of it, working on that range of motion. The big thing to look out with, just as with any kettlebell swing variant, is keeping the core stable while you do this. Don't let the back collapse down and then hyperextend. The next exercise on the docket is probably time-wise the longest one of the bunch just because it's a big range of motion. And it's the iron cross. We're going to lay flat on our back with our arms stretched out. One, to kind of give us a target for our foot. But two, also to help keep our shoulders down so we're getting more rotation out of our core and our torso. But we want to lift the leg straight up, roll it over, roll it straight back up, and then lay it straight down. Which is different than how a lot of folks execute this exercise. It's real common when doing this exercise to essentially roll over and swing the leg just essentially right along the floor. We're not lifting it up and then rolling over, rolling back and setting it down. But because we're working on the strength aspect of that glute, of that piriformis, of that hip, we're carefully lowering the leg with control and then lifting it again is what we're really after. Uh, and we'll get a good little stretch out of it as well. After the iron crosses, we're going to do a Superman with a lat pull. Uh, you can, instead of doing this, you can also do assisted pull-ups or just straight pull-ups but we're really targeting the lats and the upper back. 
If we're doing the Superman though, we do get some hamstring and glute engagement. The big caution I will give you though about doing this is make sure your toes stay on the ground so we're not pinching the lower back at L4, L5 where a lot of people have lower back problems. But we want to gently squeeze it up, squeeze the elbows down, really engaging those lats, and then squeeze it back up before we lay down. The whole motion is fully controlled uh, and we're not trying to bounce up and down. We want to keep it controlled. And this will help develop some of that uh, some of that back and core and shoulder girdle integrity that help keep us nice and solid while we're running so we're not wasting any energy. After doing the supermans or the uh, pull-ups, we have our scorpions, which fundamentally are almost the exact opposite of the iron crosses because we're going the other direction. And the difference is though, this one is a little faster and we get a little more roll kind of using that momentum to really stretch those hip flexors as well as engaging the glutes and the hamstrings. I would recommend having more space while you do this, but uh, since I was limited to my living room because of uh, equipment issues, um, you know, just gotta make sure you push the furniture out of the way. Uh, I have had some folks in the past, um, especially nursing moms tell me this is really uncomfortable. You can do a variant of this where you are standing up, essentially doing it against the wall, holding yourself up. Um, that way you don't have to worry about the discomfort associated with rolling back and forth. But for most of us, uh, it should be fully doable. It's a good way to work on that range of motion in the hip, uh, really working on getting that extension, um, which we need for a good range of motion and good mobility of the hip. Uh, and I'll give you a good little stretch across the ribs as well. After the scorpions, we get to slow it down a little bit. And at this point, your glutes and your hips are probably getting a little tired, and that's okay. But we're going to do some fire hydrants. And what we're looking for is the biggest range of motion possible on that hip. We want to drive that heel all the way to the ceiling and then all the way around. Um, you may want to start uh, on your bad side because the leg you finish on is that you're starting with. Balancing on it when you're doing the second leg is hard. So after you do a set going forward, we're going to actually do a set going backwards before we switch legs and going backwards is actually it takes a little more control to actually get the full rotation on the hip before you lower it down so you get the full range of motion on that glute um, and if you got to stop for reposition uh, that's perfectly fine notice though my knee is stacked directly beneath my hips and my wrists are directly below my shoulders uh, but it's a good, good exercise to really get those glutes fired up. Um, and if they're not cooked already, this is kind of where we finish them off. Just make sure you do the same number going forward and back and on the left side and the right side. And finally, after all that work on the floor, we get to stand up. And we, what we're going to do is set a leg swings forward and back and side to side. And the hard part isn't necessarily the lifting the leg, although we do want to keep that leg fairly straight so we're getting a good squeeze on the hip flexor and the glute, keeping that foot dorsal flex the whole time if we can. Uh, if you're having trouble balancing, which is highly probable at this point, make sure you're looking at a point some 10, 15, 20 feet in front of you instead of watching your hands or your feet. It is really hard to do this if you're watching yourself in a mirror. But we want to keep the core stable, keeping the hips stable, so only the leg is moving. And we're going to make sure we hit both sides. Again, keeping that leg pretty straight through the whole range of motion. Nice controlled. It's a lift, not a throw. And of course, we're going to finish it off with our lateral leg swings going from one side to the other. You can kind of see my bottom foot is actually turned about 45 degrees out. Um, and that's simply because your hips are gonna rotate while you're doing this. And that's the most stable position for that bottom leg. And because you can't actually swing one leg through the space occupied by the other, you have to go in front of the leg and that's fine. But definitely highly recommend sticking your hands out to the side when we do this. And we wanna lift the foot to one hand and then the other, keeping that leg straight the whole time if we can. And as much as it's work on the hip flexor on the leg you're lifting, it's really staying stable on the bottom leg is what we're really after. That hip, knee, and ankle, that's the part we're really working. And it is more difficult than it looks. 
again, watching yourself do this in a mirror will make it more difficult. So pick a spot, you know, 10 to 20 feet in front of you that isn't moving on the wall, and that will be an easier thing to help you keep your balance. Um, just like tumbling or dancing, if you can spot, it makes staying balanced much easier. Uh, but the point is to stay balanced. So try not to hang on to something to maintain your balance if you can help it. Because while the hip flexor work is important, we're really after working the stability on that bottom leg. Uh, and you notice here, this is my goofy ankle. It's not quite as stable after I uh, almost broke it a few years back. All right, so that's the upgraded ballista workout. Um, big shout out to Jason Fitzgerald over at strengthrunning.com. He's the guy that I originally was introduced to the foundation of this workout from, and it's done a lot of help over the years for a lot of my clients, uh, not just runners, but everybody, uh, with helping develop some of that pelvic stability we need, not just to run, but in everyday life. Uh, see a lot of folks with SI issues where your pelvis meets your spine, and having good strong glutes can kind of help keep that stuff stable. Um, that way you don't get a pinched sciatic nerve because that's not comfortable. So, um, yeah, big shout out to Jason. He's awesome. Uh, but obviously we've added in a couple things. Uh, we've added in some more things. Uh, we worked in the adductors. We worked in some of the lat and upper body stuff. Um, kind of working on the shoulder girl and not just the pelvic curl. Because we want to keep the whole thing stable while we're running. We don't want to have strong stable pelvis but have our top half flopping around. Um, especially for us distance runners, <clears throat> when we get tired and lazy, the head starts flopping around, shoulders start flopping around, we're going to lose a lot of energy. And if we're working that hard, we might as well get somewhere. So, stay tuned. Uh, not quite sure what we have on tap for next week yet, but in the meantime, train smart. If you have a comment, question, suggestion, leave it below in the comments. I'd love to hear what your thoughts. Um, yeah, and uh, I'll catch you next week.